In this video, we will explain how IMF quotas are determined and their impact on borrowing and voting power. We have already covered the establishment of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, its key objectives and functions, basics of IMF quotas and special drawing rights, SDRs, and how countries contribute to them in separate videos. Be sure to explore the rest of the videos in this playlist for more insights. IMF quotas are calculated based on a country's economic strength and role in the global economy. Key factors include the country's GDP, which shows its economic size, foreign reserves, which reflect financial stability, trade activity, exports and imports, and economic variability, measuring how much the economy fluctuates. Economic variability means how much a country's economy changes or fluctuates over time. For example, if a country's income depends heavily on things like natural gas or petroleum, its economy might grow a lot when prices are high but shrink when prices fall. This makes the economy less predictable. Countries with more ups and downs in their economy may get higher IMF quotas to help them manage these risks. For example, India's quota of 13.11 billion SDRs reflects its large economy and active trade, while the US has the highest quota due to its dominant economic size. These quotas determine a country's contribution, voting power, and access to IMF resources. These SDRs holdings and quota holding are an approximate estimate as of October 2024. Please refer to official IMF sources for the most accurate and up-to-date details on SDRs and quota holdings. A country's borrowing limit from the IMF is directly linked to its quota. The IMF lets countries borrow an amount that is several times their quota, making sure they get fair support based on their economy's size and contribution. For example, if a country's quota is 10 billion SDRs, it may be allowed to borrow up to 20 billion SDRs, 200% or more, depending on the situation. This system makes sure that bigger economies with higher quotas can borrow more money, while smaller countries still get fair support during financial crises. It offers a fair way to help all member countries deal with economic problems effectively. A country's quota in the IMF not only determines its financial contribution, but also its voting power in decision-making. Countries with larger quotas, like the United States, have more votes, giving them significant influence over IMF policies. For example, the US holds about 17.43% of the total voting power, allowing it to block major decisions that require an 85% majority. On the other hand, smaller or developing countries with lower quotas have much less voting power, limiting their influence. This creates a gap where rich countries like the US, Japan, and Germany have more control over IMF decisions, while smaller countries find it hard to be heard, even though the IMF aims to include everyone fairly. We will dive deeper into IMF quotas in another videos, covering topics like quota reviews, including how quotas are increased or decreased over time, and criticisms of the quota system. Don't forget to check out the rest of the videos in this playlist for more insights.